no, 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 no. It sounds nothing like the Doctor Who. Look, we've created a paradox. I mean, we haven't. But um, we have created a scale-ish crawler um, that works out of what was originally uh, an FTX Outback's Outback Gladius. Uh, this truck is now known as Gladys. I shall no longer refer to it as an FTX Gladius because um, an FTX Gladius has a lot more parts on it that were originally from uh, whoever the manufacturer of, of this vehicle is. And uh, as you guys know, um, I think it's Mega RC's Rock Viper uh originally yeah so uh let's start at the beginning wheels um they are crap um there are some fake hyraxes uh hyraxes fake hyrax here's a set so here's the set of fake hyrax that you get with the uh 2021 bronco from obsema or yikong these work really well. These don't. They're crap. They're hard. The, the foams are running, sparring, and they're dirty. That's how much I care about these. I didn't even clean them. So let's start with... Um, that's the first bit that you're going to be putting in the bin if you buy an FTX Gladius. Um, I guess next... Uh, in a moment, we'll talk about what I've replaced them with, but... For now, so as you can see, the wheel arches very quickly start to detach, and I've I've glued these back a few times. I've done little seam welding jobs on these uh, to get them to stay on, but very quickly it all starts to fall apart. As you can see, there's air through that gap here as well. Uh, and I, a lot of people said that they thought that the body was ugly. I mean, I would have liked clear windows. That would have been nice. But I don't think it's ugly. And if you just trim the back off like I did, some people, I've seen people have chopped the back right off. If that's your thing, then fair enough. But I wanted it to look relatively, you know, like a vehicle still. So, And it isn't the tidiest job, but I just wanted um, to sort of get that, that angle in there. So... Yeah, that's the body. I mean, they're, they're, they're not expensive, but, yeah, all your wheel arches are going to leave it. Um, I saw somebody did a a full uh, strengthening mod, you know, where you put the tape and the shoe goo and glue on and stuff inside here. Uh, but they added such a lot of weight to this shell, which is quite light. I would just do a bit along all of the seams on the wheel arches if you like the shell and you're going to be keeping it and maybe just around where the lights fit up to the front and i think you'll get relatively good life out of that so let's pop the body shell to one side um this isn't going to be the shortest of videos guys but somebody did ask me um i forget your name but i'll, but I'll pop a, a link up here to the uh to the comment asking me what I'd done to my Gladys and uh this was it. I was it was specifically asking I think about body mounting and uh the shock towers and stuff. So I'm gonna try to run through it in an order that makes sense for you guys. I'm gonna try not to waffle like I'm doing now. So stay with me. Um uh and the the uh, basically what I'm gonna do uh is I'm going to build an anti-RTR, an anti-Gladys, out of the cheapest, decent parts I can find um, on Amazon and the likes of AliExpress and the Endura. And we're, you know, we're, we're going to see if we can get under the price of where we're at now and build a better rig. I mean, if for the same money... Um, we can't build a better rig, then you could go this route. Um, but yeah, we've removed a lot of stuff from this, guys. 
let's just get that out of the way first. So the sum total um, of all of the parts, um, you're not going to be able to see it on here, but I will I will pop a, uh, an image up. There's the bag. Look at that huge bag. Like we've got rid of the rock sliders, we've got rid of the um, the 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 steps that come on it because I wasn't trying. I was trying to build something that looks scale-ish but crawls really well. Like that's where, like that's where I'm really interested in being, guys. I'm looking at having something that looks okay but really really works out there if i want something super scale then i take out the bronx behind which is also actually very capable but anyway i digress um so i said i would talk about the tires these are uh endura swamp claws running in the opposite direction to what you would on a one-to-one -one because they do buy it on here a little bit better Let's just hold one of the wheels up. This is a Dilwee wheel, which gives us about a 10 uh, and plus a minus 10 offset, which kicks the wheel out a little bit and gives us a bit more stability. So in this wheel uh, combo, we've got slightly more offset. We've got a lot more weight um, and we've got a tire that conforms. And for the type of crawling I do mostly, which is sort of woodland and um, wet stuff especially this time of year um, this wheel and tire combos really well in there is a cut blue insert um, we couldn't get the greens at the time so this is a cut blue it's very very soft but has very good side uh, side um, lug and side wall stability so that's the wheel and tire combo uh, all up, this is a thousand and forty grams. This entire set, uh, they're two hundred and seventy per corner. Um, so is that is that correct maths? Um, twenty forty sixty eight. You know, thousand and eighty grams uh, per per full set. So that is one of the things that we did. Um, the servo out of the box didn't feel too bad, but once we started to put grippy tyres and heavy wheels on it and stuff, the servo very, very sh uh, quickly showed its uh, its weakness, and um, we replaced it. I'm just trying to get the battery strap out of the way so the camera can focus. We replaced it with the DS servos. This is the DS3235 30kg Blue Jacket servo. Um, they're pretty cheap. There'll be links to everything that I've used in this build, guys, if you want to go down this way and turn your Gladius into a beast. Um, you'll you won't want to do that. Um, this is a battery tray from a cheap Amazon uh, or AliExpress um, chassis kit. I'm, I'm pointing off camera, just like Mr. Canyon does. Over there, there is a cheap kit. Maybe I'll show you that later in the video. Um, one of the issues when I changed the uh, the shock mount, so, and I, I'm not sure if it was present uh, before. Let's get this where you can see it. So as you can see, we've got a really nice uh, angle on the, uh, the pan hard bar and steering link, but there's not a lot of room in there. And we were getting a little bit of rub uh, on the end of the third link, the three link up here, the one for the top links and um, so we spaced that so that we stopped that and now we get nice squish and return uh, although the way they have this set up if you can see that she does lean because the pan hard mount hits the pumpkin and uh, you can get a lot more travel down one side than you can the other but out in the real world I haven't really noticed that being an issue uh, but I thought it would be worth talking about. So in here, um, as you can see, I have got a video called the FTRX4 Gladius, uh, which uh, mentions the similarities. Uh, I mean, some of these are direct copies. Uh, the axles and stuff are direct copies. As far as I can tell, there's no differences. Um, and we've got a TRX4 
uh, portal hub weight on the outer of the portal hub. We did run them front and back, um, but I, this is already a really heavy rig, and we'll talk about that at some point as well. Um, already it's a very heavy rig, so I didn't really feel that I needed the extra weight in the back. Um, inside here, so I've deleted all of the diff locking systems. So up here, you can probably see it in the bag, in the background there, there's servos. Uh, very quickly, the uh, the servos weren't actuating properly. The uh, the the mount where it goes into the diff casing at the back and the front, the plastic sleeving had come away, and it was it was starting to be a bit vague whether it decided it was gonna you know lock or unlock the diffs. And I don't want that when I'm out and about. I know what I want to get. We have now got a Fusion SE in there, so we can get enough pep up the up the top on first gear anyway. So I bought the Traxxas uh, locking, uh, the diff locking spools for the front and the back. Um, again, I'll link to everything below um, so you guys can find them. Um, I can't remember if I actually bought the Traxxas ones or whether I bought an aftermarket one, but they fitted perfectly in here again. Um, the, this must be, you know, almost a Traxxas clone in every way possible. But there are some differences, and we'll talk about those as well. So, as you can see, I've deleted the all of the servos and the mounting paraphernalia. I've taken off the uh, the the side rails, the sliders. Uh, I've taken those off of both sides. That would have gone that way round. Uh, again, we lost weight. I think we lost like 70 grams taking those off. And uh, I would like a little 3D printed side skirt up here just to so there's something behind the body in here and something for the crawler to slide over. But even just taking the steps off, guys, made it really, really better going through certain obstacles. So let's talk about the shocks next. So I'll just try to get it so the camera's focusing on it right. So in here, in this bag here, there is all the inner fenders. I instantly removed the inner fenders and mounted up these TRX4 um, multiple option. So this is a multi-option uh, mounting bracket for your shocks, but it doesn't give you enough to be able to push your shocks forward and load the shocks down a little bit and get a better rate out of the springs. I must remember to talk about the shots because they were absolutely bloody awful. Um, so I mounted those. They mount directly to the frame. I did have to finagle a little bit on the front to get the... Uh, I had to swap out and put nuts on the back of stuff and take some bits out of the front. Um, but on the whole, everything went in really well. And we, as you can see, we've got shot keys. Now, you'll need to play around with it a little bit to get it to how you want it. Um, but I found that this is about right for me at the moment. The truck sits relatively level. The links are pretty straight uh, once she's loaded up with a battery and a body. So that's the special bits. Um, uh, so... Um, I wanted to add some more brass down the bottom, uh, so I put these uh, brass link adapters or brass link mounts on, uh, and there was a problem. So uh, the TRX4 has seven mil, uh, seven mil pillow balls in here, and the uh, the Gladius for whatever reason has seven point fives. So I thought it would just be a straight bolt together and then I had to wait a week for um, some new rod ends and everything to come and pillow balls that were the right size. Fortunately, uh, the pillow balls that I ordered, again, links below for everything, uh, did snap in at the original ends. Um, so no problem there. Uh, what I was doing, actually, that might be interesting for you guys, I don't know whether you can see it, but... Um, just to get me out of a pinch, I actually used some silicone fuel hose um, as makeshift pillow balls that, you know, they'll fit anything. You just cut them the right length. 
and that actually got me out of a pinch and worked fine. I didn't actually notice that I hadn't got the real th real things in there. So um, that was that. Anything else on the bottom? Um, if you're new to the hobby, do make sure that you're running your um, your axles, not your axles, your drive shafts in series, um, in phase rather, um, because if you don't, it can cause some issues. Anything else to talk about on the bottom? I don't think so, guys. So, um, but that's a good shot of the Fusion SC. So, we had some issues there as well. So, the standard, the stat, oh, I thought Grom, I thought the, the granite Grom at the top there was going to leap off the shelf then. It might as well commit suicide because it's bloody awful. Um, so, the, the first thing... Uh, that I noticed was that there was a lot of noise coming from the Gladius when I first got it. Um, so I took apart all the portals and diffs and greased everything, and it did. It, it was a bit shy on grease, and that did improve it. But there was still like a rrr, 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 rrr sound coming out of it, uh, and I figured it would be ring and pinion. So spare and pinion, sorry. Um, so I I took this off. Had a little look in there, and then there was a video where I used like a piece of balloon to shim underneath where the motor goes in, and that did quieten it down a lot. So it looks like there's some tolerance issues within the gearboxes on the Gladius, um, and I'm not a big fan of noise because noise is energy. You know, it creates energy, or it, it uses energy to create noise, so that's inefficiency right there. Um, I'm not going to pull this off, yeah. I think, yeah. So, so what I did uh, was uh, very early on, after running, I put a 1080 in here, well, it was an 880, which is essentially a dual 1080, um, but I switched DSCs out for a while, and that did improve things on the whole, but it still wasn't fantastic. Um, you know, after moving all the electronics around to try and make the weight balance better and to be able to get a battery up the front, I was still really thinking, right, you know, we can make this a lot better than it is. So even now, you'll see that the, 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 the pinion that is in there isn't ideally length. Um, because I just used what I had, but I bought this adapter. So this was the plate that was off, um, uh, that was causing the issue uh, originally. So I bought a Fast Tracks uh, TRX4 motor adapting plate, and I put a different spur in there. And uh, I actually bought, I don't know if I can lay my hands on it now as well, I can't, I actually bought this whole housing in metal but for whatever reason they haven't directly copied the traxxas so i can't use it um so the one i bought will fit a traxxas but anyway after fitting uh the 1200 sc and getting everything set up nicely and spaced properly which this adapter did do um, it, it ran a lot, lot smoother, guys. I can't even begin to tell you how much smoother it is, but let me let me say right now, it was night and day difference. So, yeah, so this, I wasn't really impressed with the gear, and I, I guess I better talk about it now. Like, the this is all locked up in here. So this is the, uh, the two-speed over here. Let's tip it up a little bit. So this is the two, what, well, focusing on my hands. This is the two-speed mechanism in here. Um, I believe it happens to the tractors as well, but this servo has definitely not got enough muscle, um, so I'm just leaving it in first gear now. But be honest, uh, to be honest, now I've got the 1200SC in here with the right gear in. You don't really need that second gear. I mean, if you do, it's an absolute flying machine, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I would maybe even be tempted to drop a two, a two, uh, a single speed sport gearbox in there, like a genuine Traxxas one, if it will fit, and just get rid of all this gubbins as well. So we'd lose some more sprung weight, 
and we'd have a much more simple uh, gearbox. And the, the TRX4 gearboxes, I'm not a fan of Traxxas, but the TRX4 gearboxes are built like tanks. Uh, they're super solid, and you won't get any problems with that. So, uh, just going back to the shock mount, and I guess this is something that was asked in the question from YouTube as well, uh, was if you do get rid of all the factory um, uh, inners, you know, the fenders and the sliders and everything, how do you mount your body? Well, this uh, Traxxas part here, um, let me turn it round so the camera can focus. There you go. This this part here is Traxxas, and uh, I, I just ordered the kit. Um, I had a little eyeball of it and did some rudimentary measuring, and yeah, this this fitted really well. There are mounting points for um, for it. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, so there are mounting points for it in here. You have a screw go through there, which goes into here, and then that mounts down into that other piece, that sort of chassis brace part, uh, and then the same again on the front. Now, it wasn't super easy, guys. I don't want you to start pulling your truck apart and buying these bits and think everything is going to be easy. It did take a little bit of, I think uh, Crawler Canyon calls it woodworker in, where I had to you know, snip and cut a few bits and change a few things. But if you've got a little bit of savvy with that sort of thing, oh God, I sound like um, the dude out of Pirates of the Caribbean. Savvy? No, I do not savvy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, as long as you've got a bit of savvy. Savvy. You, you will be able to do it. Um... So, is that it? I'm looking at it now. Um, this is the original um, uh, radio gear inside an orange balloon. Um, and what I do is I double zip tie it, and that keeps water out, like, almost almost 100%. Um, now, if, if I had sliders, I guess I could stick, like, a waterproof battery, uh, you know, uh, radio gear tray out here. I don't really want to be fanning about with all that. This works. It's it's not, you know, it's not the most pretty uh, thing in the world, but it, it works. Um, I mount a 2200. Let me know if you want me to give you my thoughts on these guys, but I can tell you in this episode, these Hoovo 2250C are really, really good so far. I've not been using them long, you know, full disclosure. I've only had them like three weeks, but I've used them a number of times. The run time on them is really good. And they're nice and compact for a 2200 3S. These are really good. They may be the perfect battery um, to go with a 1200 SC. So I just run these up the front trying to remember which way I do it yeah I run these up the front like that can you see everything as yes, you can and as you can see the the Danes connector uh yeah I still use Danes is there and what I do when I plug these up I pull that through like that and I usually tuck underneath uh that so that this doesn't get itself into trouble the balancing lead doesn't get itself into trouble <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but the Gladius, uh, not the Gladius, the Gromit, uh, it's a, a, oh yeah, there she goes, <laughs> uh, the Granite Grom is trying to get itself into the video because that's probably the only way it's going to get into my videos now. Um, I, I could like my initial impressions with this, weren't that bad really, and I really like the truck, I love the green shell and that, but as you can see, I've got the other wheels on it, just trying to get a bit more air control out of it. It's bloody awful. Um, right, uh, I have just switched her on. Because uh, I thought you'd show you the DS3235 in action. Put a bit of weight on it, even though there's a bit of weight on it and this table's quite sticky. And um, of course, the the incredibly low down control of the uh, of this setup. 
And uh, there's a little bit of noise coming from the axles, uh, from the drive shafts. But that is pretty cool for a Gladys. Um, I keep calling it Gladys. Uh, yeah, that is pretty cool for a, a Gladius. Um, and, I, and I'm re really pleased with where this truck is now. But we're going to need to talk about price in a minute. One of the other things that bent and broke almost straight away and became unusable was the shock absorbers. Now, these were bloody awful, but they were also bargain in the century. So... Um, out of the box, these these uh, springs were a little bit heavy, and these things, when I say these leaked, my goodness, these shops leaked. But I'd been watching a Crawler Canyon video, and he talked at length about how fantastic the Traxxas seal packs were. Just reaching out shot. The 2362 seal packs, and he also said how could the Desert Lizard um seal packs were as well so he said if you get a bad bad player you can usually mend them uh by adding or interchanging the uh seals exchanging the seals sorry uh with with those and he was correct so um i can't remember if i went spacer small spacer seal large spacer seal or or, or some variation of that uh, but I did that, and these sealed up absolutely perfectly. I'm running 40 weight in these, and um, they work. They're still a little bit oversprung, but it, it, it just it does a nice job. And if you've seen this thing out on the rocks, you can see that it is it's doing pretty good for, you know, not a dedicated crawling machine uh, and something that started off life as... <laughs> an okay RTR that, that you know, slowly over time did show show its true colours and it, it did start to give me lots of problems. Um, and had I have not changed a lot of the stuff, you know, I just would have a truck that didn't work very well at all. Uh, I mean, the, the shops were unusable. So, again, I'll link to these shops. Uh, the drive tech copies that Crawler Cannon just did recently may actually be a better a better swap out. I did go to 100 mil, but with these shock towers, you can still get a lot of people put like long shocks on, and then they leave the thing right up in the air like that. If you're going to do that, you want to lower everything using the the shock keys, so you can maintain a decent ride height. I mean, if you want to jack your thing up and have it like a monster truck, then crack on. But um, if you want any sort of crawling performance, and this thing's side hills. Like with those enduro inserts in there holding the sidewalls, the side hill on this thing. Look at it. It hasn't unloaded yet. There, that's the tipping point there. Look at that, guys. Anyway, um, yeah, if you want any sort of side hill performance, you're gonna need, you know, you're gonna need to uh, uh keep your ride height low, and ideally. At running height, you want your links level. Um, this could do with slightly softer springs, as I said before. I'd like to run it about there, and then as it goes over obstacles, it drops out a little bit. But um, I thought I'm just trying to think. There was one more thing that I wanted to cover. Right, yeah, so that was it. Um, I'm running a 14 tooth pinion right now. Um, I am going to be switching up to maybe a 17 or an 18 uh, because we have got more than enough low down control um, but we've lost a little bit of the top end speed and I do need to get into the uh, uh, the the app um, not the app the uh, the control card what, what are they called <laughs> I need to get into the uh, the LED uh, controller. I can't think what it's called, guys. The the thing that you plug in that, that does the doohickey. You know what I mean. So I need to get into the controller that changes the settings uh, for the Fusion SE because I've got a little bit too little uh, reverse speed. Like the wheel speed's not really where I need it to be. 
uh, for getting off of tri tricky obstacles. So, um, the Gladius in this configuration is a lot of money. It, so, it starts off as a very cheap truck. Um, I, I, even though I went for cheap wheels and tyres, I say these cheap wheels, these are £52 a set. Um, tyres and inserts are 25 quid. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, 35 quid yeah so 52 there's 85 in the wheels 20 pound for the uh, the links and the, the hub um, weights the diffusion se the servo the shock towers everything will be linked i'll do a list over here guys on the screen now for you and um, totting up what has been spent on the gladius including what i've spent on it as well Oh, just remember one more thing, guys. The pinion angle was was awful here. This, as you can see, it's quite beaten up that um, that drive shaft. So the pinion angle originally was was really pointing down and exposing a lot of the uh, the drive shaft. Um, so I've sorted that by messing with link length. So I'm just trying to trying to make sure that I cover everything all the issues that I did run into, so you guys are aware. Oh, um, I didn't mention it. I did delete the bumper. I've got a, a nice aluminium uh, spacer, chassis spacer, uh, to go in there and to replace that part because um, it just looks a bit... I nearly said wank. <laughs> it, uh, but it, look, it doesn't look great, does it? Um... So I've got that going in there, and that will tidy that up a little bit. Um, so I think that is all the information, guys, that that um, you've asked for in the in the questions. I'm just going to grab this out quickly. So this is that cheap AliExpress um, chassis, and I've had problems with this, guys. There's no set screws. In the kit for mounting your links and uh, screws that they give you could have gone all the way through but they're not long enough um, as you can see I've got a silver chassis spacer in there because these ones I think three or or is it three out of the five didn't have any threads in so you just put the screw in it would feel like it was grabbing and then just pull free so I'm actually in talks with these guys at the moment about that so this will be the base of the rtr killer maybe i won't end up recommending uh this but i th i do feel like the the main parts that you need like the chassis rails there's a nice pinch on it it's got a nice del ring slider so as long as the rest of this um works out all right i don't think we're gonna you know throw it in the bin just because the spacers were crap um so look out for that coming up on the channel. Um, I am trying to do this. If you can imagine, the manufacturers will not want to support me if um, I'm talking shit about their trucks. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to try and be as honest. I want to be here for you guys. Um, I'm not asking you to give us money, but if you will have a go in our raffles, that will help to keep us honest. Uh, and then I can work on reviews for you guys. I've just done the six-month review of the Bronx. So I'm actually a fan of that. Um, I think for the money, this thing has done very well, although we have changed a few bits out. You could have run it standard for a trail truck, and you would have had a great time with that. Um, but not so much with the Gladius. Things have actually... We've had reliability issues, you know, the, the gearing... Uh, the the uh, front and locking front and rear locking differential mechanism not being great now it's locked out obviously i don't have the ability to unlock and lock the diffs now but it's it's really nice now i, I don't like the gearbox feels a bit cheap and nasty um so we might put an aftermarket maybe a vitavon case in there or a, a genuine tra uh, sports transmission as as i said earlier that's it for this one. Have a go on the raffle, guys. Please help keep us honest. And remember, no matter the question, love is always the answer. Bye for now. <laughs>